Okay, let's start at the start. You like Rocket League. Chances are you've probably watched some high level players and like what they do. You want to learn to do what they do. You want to hit flip resets and air dribble across the map. Nice. We all want to someday have that level of skill where we can just kind of control our car to do whatever we want. To be able to pull off even the hardest mechanics like it was nothing. But here is what you need to consider. You are probably sitting below Grand Champ and you probably don't have the 7,000 hours in the game like these guys have. And in order to just progress in the game and start to understand everything as a whole, you're going to need to rank up in order to play against harder players and then learn more from these higher ranked games to bring you closer to your dreams of complete car control. So, how do we start this journey? What do we need to learn to get us climbing the ranks and being closer to our Grand Champ goal? Hi, I'm Than. Like I've said in many videos, you don't need to learn all the fancy mechanics to improve. And today, I'll go over the important ones for ranking up. Starting with number one, which is air rolling and aerial control in general. Now, aerial control is one of the aspects of the game that you can work on no matter what rank you are. There are many different levels to aerial control, but once you start learning and you can actually somewhat keep yourself in the air, the next step is to learn how to aim your car while in the air. Now, if you don't have a directional air roll button bound, like air roll right or air roll left, I suggest binding that immediately. Then, you want to start pushing yourself as early as possible. Give yourself small drills to work on to push you out of your comfort zone. The one I always recommend is going from goal to goal trying to hit the crossbar. Then, making it a little more difficult as you go and progress. The way you can start to learn air rolling is to do redirect training packs. They teach smaller movements and how to use the different sections of the car to aim the ball in different ways. Then you can start doing some shooting training packs to learn air roll shots as well. Getting all of these down individually takes a lot of time and are things you work on even way above Grand Champ. But while you're climbing the ranks, the faster you can have some sort of aerial presence in the game and make yourself a viable threat in the air, the more opportunities you give yourself to impact the game as a whole. The next mechanic I believe you should work on is wall play. Is that how you say it? Wall play. Like, well, getting better on the wall in general. Understanding how your car moves on the wall is incredibly important as you make your way up the ranks. If the ball is near the wall, you'll beat an opponent who is flying up to it by driving up the wall almost every single time. Using the wall also saves a lot of boost and once again gives you a lot of pressure in the air which can seriously impact some of the lower level games. To start learning wall play, leave the ball completely. You just need to focus on your car at this point. Drive up the wall and try flipping off in different directions. Then just try simply driving and understanding the change of perspective while on the wall. Essentially, you want to get to that point where you can say, I'm going to drive onto the wall and then I'll do this and this will happen. Being able to understand the outcome of something before you do it means you can plan ahead and focus your attention on the rest of the players on the field. I can also link a training pack that can help you with this when it comes to including the ball as well. But when you're starting off, you want to look for power and then accuracy. Because chances are you'll be using this to clear the ball more often than shoot the ball when you're first learning. Once you get more familiar with this, you will be more comfortable reading the ball off the wall and understanding how it bounces. This will also naturally build up your speed of play as you'll hesitate less once you can read the bounces. Another thing wall play allows you to do is have an easier time defending by using the back wall. This is one that will probably only really get used in the higher ranks, but it allows for quick ways above the goal to stop any backboard shots or just to give you another angle to defend the goal from. While I do say it's used more at the higher ranks, trying to learn to defend from your own backboard is something you can work into your training if you feel you can get the hang of it and are comfortable with your general wall play already. Next up, we have half flips. Now, normally I and a lot of other YouTubers talk about half flips and wave dashes as kind of a combined package. They're the standard things people talk about when it comes to a lower level mechanics to learn. I think half flips are more important at a lower level than wave dashes, but obviously it's important to learn both. Now, the reason I'm emphasizing half flips is because in the lower ranks, you are more likely to whiff the ball, to be positioned badly, or to have trouble with recoveries. In all of these situations, there's a high chance you'll need to turn around quickly in order to get back into the play. The earlier you learn how to half flip, the faster you can improve your outcomes of the situations just mentioned. Once you've learned it, you'll find yourself using it in almost every single game you play. Also, when it just comes down to it, the half flip is the most efficient way of turning around, so why wouldn't you learn it? 
While there are many tutorials when it comes to half flips, I'll give you a very brief tutorial here. You want to first backflip. Then cancel the backflip halfway through by moving your analog stick forwards. After this, you want to use one of the directional air roll buttons that we talked about earlier to adjust your car in the air and have it roll the right side up. There is another way of doing it, but I would say just stick to this for now, and if you want to branch out then there's plenty of other tutorials out there that can help you. The next mechanic I believe lower ranked players should work on is momentum. Now this one might seem a little bit strange, but momentum can carry through to many different aspects of your gameplay. Your momentum directly ties into your movement, and so focusing on improving your momentum will also improve your movement across the board. When it comes to momentum, there are a few things you need to look at. Your boost management, your speed and being able to keep up your speed, and your positioning in regards to other players around you. So I'll try and break those down individually for you really quickly. Your boost management is the more simple one. You need to have boost in order to speed up in order to have a greater impact on the game. Now, while I know the big boost pads around the outside of the map are pretty enticing, there is another way to get boost. Here's the layout of the field. The little dots right here are gonna give you 12 boosts for each pad picked up. The layout of these pads are very important to know. They allow you to stay stocked up on boost and remain relevant to the gameplay. You should always be looking to pick up the smaller boost pads over the bigger ones unless you can make it to the big boost pads and back into a good position without giving the opponent an advantage in any way. Now, an advantage can be seen as free time on the ball to set up a play, like getting ready to dribble or just controlling the ball in general. Giving away advantage when you don't need to just puts you in a worse position. There are so many times that people go for the big boost pads because they think they need 100 boosts to give them an advantage over their opponent. But you have to remember that while you're away from pressuring the ball, your opponent has a lot of time to pick up their own boost and control the ball. The best thing to do when wanting to get boost but also press your opponent is to learn some small paths around the field so you can pick up a decent amount of boost while staying close enough to your opponent to stop them from being able to comfortably set up to play their own game. Another factor when it comes to momentum is your speed. This comes down to understanding that your speed is directly linked to your boost management. With proper boost management, you shouldn't have too many of those moments where you aren't really moving at all or you're waiting for the boost to spawn. Now your speed, especially at the lower rank, has a massive impact not only on your impact on the gameplay, but also how your opponent plays. If you come up against a player that has better boost management and seems to be everywhere at once because they're playing faster than you, you will naturally feel pressured into making decisions quicker and you'll end up trying to play to their speed, which you will not be comfortable with. Getting used to playing at a faster speed helps you to force your opponent into uncomfortable playstyles for them and leaves them making simple mistakes. On top of all of that, the game gets so much faster the higher up the ranks you go, so understanding simple ways to increase your speed at a base level will really take you a long way. Lastly, under the momentum section, we have positioning and especially positioning in regards to other players. While playing with teammates, you need to make sure you're keeping up your speed, maintaining a good amount of boost, while also staying not too close to your teammates. You'll want to be positioned in a way that makes you a viable option in any case where they're looking to pass, but also able to turn back in case the teammate makes a bad 50-50. Watch the positioning in this clip between myself and my teammate. I'm not getting too close that we would both get taken out by a bad 50-50, and I'm not too far away that the play becomes a 1v2 situation. You'll need to find a good distance and learn spacing. This ties into playing the game more and more, understanding how people will think and move in each given situation, and then how to react and position. Now, admittedly, this is not something that will come quickly to you. This is going to take a decent amount of time. But the earlier you are aware of it, the faster you can start to actively think about it, which will get you learning faster. All three of those subtopics tie into momentum in their own way, but ultimately you will need to learn each individually in order to get the most out of the others. The last mechanic you should focus on if you're a lower ranked player is power shots and hitting the ball hard in general. I have mentioned this many times in the past because it is one of the things that players think they have down and they never really put any time into it again. Being able to hit the ball with power isn't just useful for shooting, it helps when it comes to clearing the ball, passing, or even just setting up some sort of play. If you cannot reliably hit the ball with power from any position on the field, you will find that this seriously impacts both offense and defense. You might miss shooting opportunities because you can't hit the ball hard enough to catch them off guard when they're out of position, or you might concede a goal because you didn't clear it over the attacker, which just gives the possession straight back to them. 
In order to hit the ball with power, an easy step is to wait until it's just after it's bounced. Then flip into it, connecting with the front or corners of your car. If the ball is not bouncing, you still want to be hitting it with those parts of the car as they generate the most power. You'll want to go into free play or one of the basic training packs and just keep the ball moving with these power shots. Then, once you've learned to hit the ball with power, focus on aiming the ball as well. After a decent amount of practice, you should be able to clear or shoot from most positions on the field, which will help your overall game a lot. Now, I haven't really made a video that was aimed at some lower levels before, but it's come up a few times in my comments recently, and so I hope this really helps those of you out there looking to improve your overall gameplay. I tried to mix in some key information, along with some things that don't really get talked about all that much. If you have any video topics you want me to cover, please let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, that's everything from me. Next week's video is going to be the 100 hours of shooting practice, so make sure you don't miss out on that one. Anyway, have a good one guys. Peace.